all our parts are back from sandblast for the Dakar. Um, everything's kind of that consistent sandblast color. It rusts pretty easy, but it's also extremely easy to fabricate on and work on. So we're going to kind of set this stuff on the table and get it squared away. It was a lot better right there than like right when you get off the freeway yeah. and it's actually residential. Yeah. That shit fell unsafe. That shit was disgusting. <laughs> we gotta work for it, dude. Yeah. yeah. Good job, thank you. So this is the last piece of the puzzle right now. <clears throat> this is our Dakar prototype uh, base. This is the perfect shape and form and platform for what we want here. Um, and this is what will be transformed as just our, our shell. Um, and it'll truly turn into the Dakar prototype. Um, this thing will be, you know, our, our overall track width here is going to be 14 inches wider per side. So you can think it's going to be pretty substantial here with the overhangs. Yep, those are dirty hands. Uh, but this will be perfect rear engine. Uh, you know, the, there's a lot of good treatments on this thing already aesthetically and styling wise. We really wanted to just have the interior portion, just the, the front of the interior done, like A pillar to B pillar. Uh, knew that we were gonna get some kind of a collision car just for obvious reasons, and the front collision's perfect because the front's gonna get stretched four inches. Uh, the wheelbase, like the hood and, and the grill and everything will be four inches further forward uh, than, than stock. And that's a lot for just the clearancing issues with the wheels and tires. Uh, so with the collision, knew that we would have airbag uh some kind of airbag damage in there fortunately this one we were looking at another one but fortunately this one is just this guy here and no passenger because all these door panels uh the dash the center console infotainment all that stuff we're going to retain all that stuff's going to run uh, just like it would the only thing we're going to replace is where you see there's the park and drive and all that stuff that's where there will be a uh, gated manual shifter for the albans so we want to keep the door panels something that's really cool too is how big like how wide the door sills are that's a lot of meat right there so we're probably going to be able to run chassis in here really nice and and put some structure on the sides um, where we you know we don't have to interfere with some of the floor this will probably go away uh, just you know because we got to cut it right at the b pillar and then there'll be a back wall here a partition uh, because in the back area like all the this whole entire area will be engine um, transaxle you know coolers possible fuel cell and obviously shocks so just in relation to where we're at here um, shocks are probably going to live right in this area 37 uh, all this door jam area will be gone this is all aluminum unibody so we got to be creative with how we mount this thing to all the tube structure uh, but you know we're probably going to tuck tuck a 37 at full compression right up to the belt line here so there's just enough overhang here to package our v10 um, you know and then have the transaxle and the cvs and the axles doing their thing so this is kind of, we've had to really work for this. These guys, hey, you know, you know they just come and they just honk. You, you want to know why I did that? Because I've never been in one of your fucking videos. Okay. I figured that was the only oh. way to get in. Was you guys, this is Jason. Steam ahead. This is Jason. <laughs> Obviously you can tell he's, he's just taking a vacation from Pelican Bay right now. He's usually a shot caller there. So, <laughs> and this is Jay. Say hi, Jay. Hi. Hi, Jay. Anyways, they, they rolled up and fucking laid a fat honk before I was going to close this thing out. And uh, I was just saying that we've had to work for this. This has been a, a, this, this model car has been like a dream of mine to transform into a pre-runner uh, for, gosh, uh, since, you know, this thing came out, maybe 2015. Uh, and... 
we had something like this going, but it was just very mellow LS front engine, nothing like this. Uh, and this is a rear engine. This is how it should be. Um, and this is, this is going to do stuff that no other vehicle like this has ever done, uh, with a pressurized cabin and two seats in there. Uh, it's going to be awesome. So this is our last piece. Looks like it runs. We didn't start it. Alex said they loaded this thing on with 20 foot forks. So at least we can get it off easy. Don't have to use the forklift. I don't know about that yet. Well, you just got to gear slam it. Once it starts, just get it, put it in gear fast. They ripped the battery and all the wires to it out. So I just kind of jerry rigged that <laughs> straight to the box. <laughs> but it's got so many sensors going off. The yeah. And this and that. I don't know if it's, it's going to let us. Yeah, copy that. that. Can you go lower? Uh, ride positioning sensor on the dampener. Front of the upper arm. Well, all in a day's work. That boy was a mechanic before he was a fabricator. There's a lot of benefits to that. He's on a mission right now. <laughs> How's this going? Good. Talk to me about this thing, dude. Just give me a brief rundown of the fuckery and how things have been going and all that stuff. Do me up. So I'm doing the non-delicate stuff first. Yep. Just because I know once I get into the interior, I gotta be clean and get that stuff as neat as possible. So starting on the outside and then gonna work my way in. It looks like it's a complete unibody where all the subframes just came off. Exactly. <laughs> the subframes are pretty fantastic. It's four bolts on the rear and six in the front, and then they just fall off pretty much. So, so it's just dealer repair markup. When sure. you bring this thing I, in, I think it's just good ingenuity. <laughs> yeah, it already looks better. Oh man, you can kind of see a vision already on this thing, but look at how good the shapes Especially are. With the drawing, like, yeah, see it. so we're getting close. Like I said, this is this has been a day's work for Colin, it's pretty impressive. I always tell the guys because they come from a mechanical background and working on stuff, and that's one of my defects. is wrenching on stuff and being efficient with it and and you know even like if i have to take a seat out of something it just it presents itself as a challenge um and this is a testament to the opposite end of that thing what's up what's up <laughs> so it's just another check in on this um we'll get the whole body going and you know after all of the components are stripped out of here then it's going to really be a bunch of cutting uh, and pretty precise cutting as far as what we want to leave and what we don't, we need to kind of watch areas where the trim will go in the back hatch like we talked about. Uh, but a lot of this front stuff is just going to go away in general. Rear area is going to go away. All this stuff's gone. Um, I even think a lot of this sill is going to be gone. And it's nice, but it's just not what we need. This is one of the design challenges we're gonna face here is what we're gonna do with that glass. Um, it's a nice feature, but as, especially with having a lot of the cooling going into the back, having the engine in the back, um, all of our systems, we need some kind of a negative shape ducting going back right after the B pillar. It needs to dip and we need to have like some tin work um, where there's feed going back here from the top surface of the roof, air going through, and then the, these quarter windows are gonna be scoops. So they'll come out and there'll be more scoop going in and then we need to have relief. So the, the actual rear quarter in the bedside, that'll have like a spatial gap in this portion here. 
spatial gap where that'll bleed some of the air out and have an exit path. Uh, I don't know exactly where else we need to do it, but we might put some kind of a detail into the rear hatch because we'll have so much air going in. We have to have a place for it to go out. And usually the rule of thumb is like, I don't, I don't, you might want to think it's like a 30% entrance and a 70% exit or something, uh, but it's, it doesn't want to tighten as far as the air going out. Um, so we'll keep checking in on this thing. Mike came, got the windows. Well, one of them didn't get the front. Process of elimination here. So um, before Colin and I kind of went through a, a cut program, like where to start initial cuts on this thing to get the floors out, but really came into the conclusion that we need to pull the instrument panel first. Um, so we can get a real good ballpark on where we need to go instead of like leave something in, cut some. You're also throwing a bunch of debris and, and material or whatever's coming off the cutoff wheel into the instrument panel and the display. So getting all that stuff out of here, um, it is off. These things are always complex. HVAC system's really big. So all that whole unit is what we're going to we're going to retain, um, and and we'll figure out proper mounting. We'll probably keep a lot of the mounting locations, uh, and then we'll just do away with all of the firewall that's tied into the to the unibody. Thing. It's a lot. That makes me feel overwhelmed. That's why wiring guys are special. If they say, oh, no problem, and they look at that, and they go, nah, no big deal. That's what this is. And That's this a is different type of person. It's like a Russian.
would be a, a sprightly little one. Okay, we are in phase two of the Dakar prototype. We have got all of our cutting done, uh, all of the shell, all the junk kind of try the fat trimmed out, if you will. Um, everything is prepped, everything's put away, all the scrap is where the scrap needs to go. We call and attack the shit out of this thing. He carefully deconstructed and removed all the wiring. Uh, no cutting wires, no doing any stuff that's gonna compromise the electronics in the future. Um, got everything to a point where we could get this thing on the fixture table. And that's where we have it now. Uh, we've already kind of spent some time getting the wheelbase set up uh, and the suspension where it needs to be. The bulkhead set, all of our caster is built into the bulkhead. So the actual anti-dive or the angle of the bulkhead is what sets the caster. That thing's completely square. So it's kind of easy. You just kind of kick it. And that puts the caster in at ride height where you want it. Um, there's, that's a pretty good example of your overall width on this thing. Right at 91, which is exactly what we set up for from the start. Uh, this is a trailing arm car. <sighs> I told myself, like, it's been a running joke for most of my career with doing motorsports fabrication that I have gotten away from not having to do cv joints my whole life and there's no intention on me doing them now and it's very ironic that now our dakar prototype is our first irs using a cv joint uh, or a cv style axle in the rear um, right now what we're doing right now is we are you know the the bulkhead is fixed the cab is fixed the rear bulkhead is also fixed and what i mean by fix is it's secure to the chassis table so it will not move and it is completely square um, that enables us to connect the two after we've set the wheelbase on this thing and wheelbase i just mean from center line of rear at ride height to center line of front at ride height um, and it's really that a lot of the rear was based on packaging for the engine and the gearbox which will be in the rear and we really didn't want to compromise on the hatch not working um, the whole vibe of this thing is we want to be able to close that hatch and have a V10 twin turbo Lamborghini engine in the back. Um, and that's like, you know, we're going to adjust that wheelbase based on that. So the engine and the gearbox, the gearbox mocked up on there. We don't have the adapter plate done yet. That's going to be a one inch thick adapter plate, but we do have it together. So there's just some makeshift stuff that Colin did to adapt that and get it centered and proper. Um, you know, everything is ready. All of our measurements are ready. This thing will get plugged into here. But right now, we are setting up tube layout. And what I mean is just getting that floor dialed in, figuring out what tubing and wall thickness will be here. Uh, something that's very important with this stuff, just like we do with Vivian. Vivian is all two inch overall diameter on, on the chromoly tube, which is all the chassis. Uh, with that, there's a ton of wall thickness variations in that. And that's why Vivian's only 5,800 pounds wet, which is pretty light for that scale of a truck. This is gonna be all two inches well. Um, since it is on 37s, it's a much smaller car, much lighter. Um, we're gonna build it very strong, but we are gonna really cheat the wall thicknesses. So it'll look gnarly and big and bulky and two inch, but we'll have a ton of very calculated thought process on where we put, you know, you might flick one of those tubes and it goes ping and it's 065. Uh, so just going through, I'm pre-running some of this stuff here. This is where I'm at with the floor. We have the, the side runners here and we have the front. Um, there's all this stuff is miters with partitions. You can see there's a, a cap on here that's the same. So this is all 120, which is almost eighth inch. And this is cap welded and beveled. So that's ready. That's your proper way to run a miter junction. 
Um, the same thing there. We've adapted that right into the sweet spot of that bulkhead where all the plate starts so we can just tie it right in. Um, and now it's figuring out what stress loads and what shifting is going on where we want to prioritize what tubes need to be ran first and how thick they need to be. And that's what this is. So you can see the bulkhead is this portion here. And this is our 120. We're going to run two 120 stringers and then it'll go down from there. And then we'll run these guys, which is going to be our secondary tubes, which those will be 095. And then these kicks, that'll be these guys. Those guys are going to be 065. Um, when, you know, there's, there's a section here where this is kind of empty and you'd want to keep dragging it on. But what we'll do is this is going to be a very good setup for us to get going and draw stuff up. So that'll be perfect. The runner, like the stringer tubes being 065 are just a perfect little tie-in for extra support. Um, the areas here that you can't see yet, we cut all this off. So when we plate this, we can tie the chassis right into it. And we're not just like welding a tube somewhere right to the end of this. We'll, so this, this whole pivot, which, let me get this for you. These pivots on like a trailing arm, like a buggy trailing arm, these are notorious for ripping out or, or ovalizing or wallowing out the hole into a, you know, turning it into a hot dog in a hallway with the bolt. So this is an excellent opportunity where we can just get plate work going here, plate work tying in, and then just make this whole thing one. Um, once we get these floors in, then we'll start thinking about where that engine, like the very exact positioning of the engine needs to be. We can't do that just yet because we're not in a position on the chassis table to droop out the suspension. And with these IRS cars, the axles have a very specific place they wanna be when the suspension is at full droop. So we know that we have enough room now with the back hatch to close. We need to tie all this together, tie some of the body in. And then once the body's tied in and the, the chassis has a floor, then we can lift it up. We can put jack stands under it on the table and we can let the suspension come out really get a final on where these axles are and then we'll take our engine and our gearbox and we'll place that thing in here and we'll set it and then we'll be able to just start going hard on this whole chassis so i'll come back and check in with you guys when all these tubes are in and we'll kind of go from there